China is now further helping African countries, or certainly with their vaccination rollout, and particularly as there are now fears about this new Omicron variant, which has popped up in the south of the continent. So President Xi Jinping speaking at this forum yesterday between Africa and China did say that uh, China would give uh, Africa another one billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines uh, to help the country better shield against the virus, uh, where vaccination rates have been particularly low. China has already, it's important to highlight, sent 200 million COVID-19 vaccine doses to Africa, but uh, only just over 10% of people in Africa have received at least one dose of the vaccine, far behind uh, other continents. And so China is really uh, looking to extend a helping hand now and fill that gap and help this continent reach some 60% of a vaccination rate. Take a listen to what President Xi Jinping had to say yesterday. In order to achieve the goal of getting 60% of the African population vaccinated against COVID by 2022, I announced that once again, China will send 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines to African nations, 600 million of which will be granted as aid. Now, on top of all of this, sending vaccines to Africa, President Xi Jinping also talked about uh, sending uh, 1,500 health experts to the continent to really help them deal with the pandemic, but also set up 10 health projects across Africa. It's not clear what those will be, uh, but it will also encourage Chinese companies to pump uh, some $10 billion into the continent over the next uh, three years. He also promised a cross-border UN centre uh, to provide these African financial institutions with a line of credit to the tune of also around $10 billion. Uh, China will provide money to really help uh, African exports and trade uh, and uh, build a China-Africa industrial park. Uh, the money can also be used for African financial institutions to be loaned to these small and medium-sized businesses. So a lot of money being poured uh, into this continent. A lot of promises also being made, Shri. And you've got to look at this uh, dynamic through the lens of vaccine diplomacy, of course, but also another way of looking at it is the global competition for influence that is going on between China and the United States. So are the African nations convinced here because China is positioning itself or trying to as an ally as opposed to a neo-colonial power? A lot of them are saying thanks, but you do wonder where a lot of them are saying thanks, but no thanks, because, of course, there's been a lot of criticism of China when it comes to this so-called debt trap diplomacy, uh, you know, that it has been pouring these huge amounts of cash into these poor nations and saddling them basically with money that they cannot repay back. And that's particularly been brought to light with the Belt and Road Initiative, one of President Xi Jinping's babies. So uh, the question certainly is still there. Will they actually accept some of these uh, promises coming from China. When it comes to uh, the vaccine stuff, you know, I mean, certainly um, China has been wanting to put on a brave face for the rest of the world since the beginning of this pandemic. And President Xi Jinping, since they got the vaccine thing rolling, has mm. been really wanting to send these to developing countries. But this comes at a time when uh, China is still trying to vaccinate its own country. Um, there's also been a lot of questions about the efficacy uh, of these Chinese vaccines. Um, but, you know, speaking through the prism of this uh, US-China uh, influence Influence through the world's two biggest economies. I think it's really interesting um, if you look at the Chinese state media coverage of this Africa-China summit that they held yesterday. Um, certainly they have been talking up the close ties between Africa and China at the moment while also criticising the US. They've actually said uh, they've had no substantial input, only paying lip service to Africa, uh, but also wanting to compete with China, certainly for influence in this region. I mean, President Xi Jinping wanting to get close with Africa and being friends with these countries is nothing new, but now you could perhaps see it um, certainly in the context of perhaps wanting to counterbalance some of these uh, efforts now by the US, which have been looking to Europe and here in Asia to uh, really counter the threats and challenges posed by China. And I think uh, just a couple of points just to round off. I think the, the reason, uh, and we were talking to the WHO's chief scientist about this yesterday, one of the reasons why we are seeing an uptick of cases and new variants in South Africa especially is because of vaccine inequity globally. So that is a problem that still has not been fixed. Mm. And arguably China is trying to respond to this problem, but it should be responding to it through a global platform like, like COVAX or uh, the Gavi pro program as well. So that, that, that is a, another story. But to your point, it's interesting 
in the last uh, year or so, you've been seeing some pushback mm. from countries here in Asia, I'm thinking about Malaysia, thinking about Sri Lanka, yep. on the viability of a lot of this uh, China, China projects and, and the onerous terms of conditions, arguably, mm. that go with it too. So it's, it's becoming an EM uh, dynamic now.